What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. Contest number three is officially over and we have a couple of wonderful winning reports that we're gonna take a look at in this video. As a reminder, we run these contests the first Monday of every month. So contest number four will be coming up in just a couple of weeks. If you wanna compete in the next competition, make sure you sign up on the BI Elite training portal. Contest number three hosted an awesome data set breaking down the happiness of different countries based on different factors. This data came from the World Happiness Report. It's a really cool data set that the report developers were able to dig into and even add some data to it in order to create some stunning reports. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into our two winning reports. The first winning report comes from Juan Pedro Martinez. You can actually interact with this report directly from the winner announcement page. The link will be down in the description, but I'm actually going to interact with this report directly from powerbi.com because this report does use a specific map that isn't going to render in a public visual. So over in powerbi.com, I have one pages report open. I'm going to maximize it just so we can get a good idea of the entire report. So right off the bat, this report is pretty visually appealing. There's a very easy navigation directly from the first page you have the option to go to a summary page, a mapping page, or an analytics page. So let's go ahead and start our navigation on the summary page. So this page is going to break down a lot of great information about these different countries and what makes them happy or not happy. I'm not gonna go through each individual visual, but I think this page provides a very nice summary and give you a general idea of which countries are happier and which countries are least happy. For example, we have the top 10 countries by happiness and we have the bottom 10 countries by happiness. You can even slice by the year. So if I just wanna see the most recent year, uh, show me which countries are the happiest. I see that Finland was actually the happiest country of 2020. We can even see the happiness by region, which it's interesting that the region doesn't necessarily match up to the top countries. For example, looking at the top five countries or so, I would imagine Europe would be one of the happiest regions, but it doesn't look like that is the case. You'll also notice that there is a really nice navigation flow to this report. So we are on the summary tab. At any point, we can go to the map tab or the analytics tab. But specifically, I really like the sub navigation option that Juan Pedro has added as well. You can see that we're on the summary main tab, but we also have the ability to go to the summary detail tab. This tab is actually my favorite tab of the entire report. This page features a very nice report page tooltip. As you hover over the bars in this visual, it is going to pop open with some deeper information. So when we hover over the North America bar, we'll see the information for that North America region. I see a dynamic title across the top of that report page tooltip, and it just shows the distribution of the happiness over the years. It even shows the ranking over the years, which is really interesting to see the rise and fall of these different regions. This is even cooler by the fact that I can drill down into these regions to get the individual countries. So if I drill into North America, we'll see the United States and Canada making up North America. I'm actually going to back up and do that for a region with more countries. For example, let's do Western Europe. Let's drill down. So we see all of the countries in Western Europe. So I can hover over a certain country, for example, Italy, and see the breakdown for Italy over the years. So this report page tooltip is very dynamic in that it will show either the region as a whole or the individual countries. I really like that. One other awesome feature of this tab is that at any point you can click on this button here and it's going to show you a tabular version of the data. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we have a table on the left that's the global ranking by country and we also have the ranking variation by country. So some report users like visuals and graphs and some like just tabular reports. So it's nice to add the option to let them choose what they wanna see or how they wanna see it. There is one awesome feature on this tab that's easy to miss, but adds a really dynamic element to this tab. It's this rank versus previous year column. This is dynamic in the fact that it asks you to choose a single year, and then it's going to show you the ranking versus the previous year. So as we've selected 2020, we can see this country's rank versus their 2019 ranking. It's really cool to be able to make that direct comparison. For example, if I wanted to see 2017, we could see the ranking against 2016. I really, really like that. I can't say enough about it. Now let's take a look at the map tab. This is pretty simple in that it is a single map showing us the happiness overall, just in a geographical view. Uh, Juan Pedro has elected to use the ArcGIS map, which is very beautiful right out of the box. I really do like this decision. In this map, darker red means that it is a happier country and lighter towards yellow um, or kind of whitish means that it is a less happy country. So you can easily get an idea of which regions or countries are actually the happiest just visually. And then also there's a final tab here that's analytics. And this breaks it down a little bit deeper. You can see several scatter charts that actually perform some clustering in order to see if there's any correlations between the two factors shown in the scatter chart. For example, happiness versus 
family values, happiness versus freedom, happiness versus generosity. It's really cool to be able to see these correlations. For example, it looks like there's a pretty linear correlation between happiness and economy, happiness and health, whereas happiness and trust seems to be a little bit more scattered, doesn't necessarily follow a one-to-one -one correlation. There's also a second analytics tab. Uh, this visual here on the left is an excellent use of a waterfall chart. It is basically showing the individual pieces that make up happiness. Uh, as with this data set, there are several factors that contribute to happiness, but this waterfall chart makes it easy to understand how much each one contributes. So let me go ahead and click on 2020. For example, uh, basically you start with a value of two. Every country is at least a happiness of a two. And family values add 1.2 to an overall country's happiness on average. Economy adds 0.9. So we basically see the breakdown of how important each individual feature is. Interestingly enough, trust and generosity are actually not as important uh, in terms of a country's happiness. Let me get rid of 2020 so we can see the forecast for the happiness. That's a good use of the built-in forecasting within Power BI line charts. And then finally, Juan Pedro ends with this really nice violin plot, allowing the more analytical users to get an idea of the distribution of these happiness scores. I do wanna go back to the analytics tab real quick because Juan Pedro added the play axis slicer, which is a personal favorite of mine. I like animating the data and making the reports a little bit more dynamic. So you can click this play button and it's actually going to step through each individual year to see the individual scatter charts. I just think that's a really cool feature and it wows a lot of end users. So whenever you can add some little dynamic flair to a report, I think that's always a good idea. And with that, I'm going to end with the information page that Juan Pedro has added. If you want to read more about Juan Pedro, please do so. There's also a link to his LinkedIn, or if you are on the contest page, you will see his LinkedIn link here as well. Great job to Juan Pedro on this report. I think he did an absolutely great job in this contest. With that, let's go ahead and move on to winning report number two. This report was created by Kyle D. Bernardi. Again, you can view this report in the browser, but I am actually going to view it in PowerBI.com because he does use some really cool Python visuals that aren't going to render in a public report, unfortunately. But let's go ahead and maximize this and get started digging into the report. So I really like how Kyle starts with an information page. He breaks down the individual metrics that will be viewed throughout the report so that the report user can easily understand what they're about to consume. This makes the report more of a narrative or a storytelling that's going to explain or try to answer the question of what makes people happy. There's a nice clean navigation flow on the left side. So let's go ahead and start with the overview tab. This is a nice visual representation of the happiness over the different countries. You also have a line chart showing the individual factors leading up to happiness and seeing the trends. Although this visual looks simple, I think it's really interesting to see that happiness score has increased throughout the years overall, but the trend for the individual factors doesn't necessarily show too much movement. There is a small increase in the importance of health in the happiness score, but for the most part, it's not any individual factor that is promoting the overall happiness to increase. There's also a really cool table on the right side with the flag images. That's a really nice feature that Kyle has added to this table. You can even click on the flag and it's going to filter down the rest of the report based on that selection. I'm gonna skip the buy country tab and move on to the buy energy price tab. This tab is an example of how Kyle went the extra mile in that he brought his own data set to use with the contest data set. Kyle incorporated the average oil price and average natural gas price for each country to see if that might have a factor in the country's overall happiness as well. You can slice by country to see their average oil price and average natural gas price, and you can infer if it affects the happiness that you can see as the line in each of these visuals. Similarly, Kyle brought a second extra data source, breaking down each country's access to clean water. This was one of the most interesting correlations that I think was uncovered from this data set in that in happy countries, uh, sanitation and water access are always kind of one-to-one. -one. They're always highly correlated. But in unhappy countries, you can see that there is a major disconnect between the access to water and their sanitation. So that is a direct factor in the happiness of any country. Kyle ends with three similar tabs that are showing different metrics based on happy countries or unhappy countries or all countries. I'm gonna focus on happy countries. And you can see this is a good example of how Kyle used Python visuals in order to show a visual that's a little bit more out of the box than the default Power BI visuals. This radial gauge does a really nice job of showing multiple countries at the same time. And you get an idea of the actual magnitude of each individual country. If Kyle were to use a bar chart, for example, it would be hard to show all of the individual countries in a single view, but with this radial gauge, you're able to get an idea of multiple countries at the same time. 
for the most part, you can infer that in the world's happiest countries, uh, freedom doesn't change too much from the happiest to the least happy country. But for generosity, for example, um, there is a large distribution between the levels of generosity in these happiest countries and even more so via corruption. So among the happiest countries, some are listed to be very corrupt and some are not as corrupt. Uh, similarly, in the unhappy countries, we'll see similar breakdowns as well. Corruption is wildly skewed. Um, in a single country, it looks like they're doing well on corruption, but corruption is a large factor for several unhappy countries. I thought it was a really nice addition to add this specific Python visual, especially when there's not a really similar visual available in the default Power BI visuals or the level of customization needed isn't included in any custom visuals. Again, you can view this report on the contest page. There's also a link to Kyle's LinkedIn page as well. Those are the two fabulous winning reports from our contest number three. Stay tuned for contest number four coming up in just a few weeks. We're going to have an awesome data set for that one, and I will see you in the next video.